Oh man, this video has taken me way too long to make. It's taken me way too long to upload. I've been working on this for the last few days and it has been an absolute mess. I mean, theoretically, if you're watching this video right now, it means that I finally got this video done and uploaded to YouTube, but I really wish that future Mike could just tell past Mike that he's going to get through this video and give him maybe some words of encouragement because this video has taken way too much of my time and effort in the last few days. But anyways, I've wanted to make an ultimate tips video for Rocket League for quite a while. I wanted a video where everybody from beginner to intermediate can come and find a ton of information from all areas of Rocket League, find a lot of good resources, and basically just have like a one-stop shop, one video to get it all done, or at least one video to get it started, so people don't have to continuously scour the internet for all kinds of information regarding this game. Hopefully what I've created is a very good starting place for everybody who wants to improve their skill at Rocket League. However, I did try to include a lot of advanced techniques and advanced tips in this game, just so you can get at least familiar with it. That's not going to be the most in-depth guide, but I want to contain as much information from a broad spectrum as possible. So I have put in hundreds of hours into this game on console, on PC, at 60 frames per second, at 144 frames per second. I have made several videos on the game with well over a million views just on my Rocket League content. Granted, not all of it is tutorials, but most importantly, I have made a ridiculous amount of errors in this game that have taught me a lot. First and foremost, I just want to point out that I am not among the best players in this game by any means. I am not a professional Rocket League player. I just realized it sounds like I'm giving stock trading advice on YouTube. Like, do I really have to say that I'm not, like, a professional just to give out advice? Is this what YouTube has become? Well, yeah, Mike, otherwise you get roasted in the comments. Yeah, good point. Basically, what I've done is collected information, tips and tricks from many different videos. I watched so many videos this month. I've tried to find many different play styles, too, so I can give, like, a well-rounded analysis of the game. And also, I'm including a lot of information that I myself have found over playing this game. The knowledge that you gain from this video is going to be curved along your personal skill level. If you're in the prospect skill rank, you're probably going to be learning so much that you want to pause this video at times just to soak it up. However, if you're a superstar rank or higher, don't be surprised if you already know most of this content or this content isn't going to help your game out a lot. It's not going to hurt to watch this video, obviously, but I just want you to know up front, this is not a video that I tailored for superstar rank or higher. Most of the stuff that I talk about in this video is going to be relative to a 2v2 game mode, but it still applies in 1v1 and 3v3 game modes. 4v4 gets a little bit chaotic hence the name. But this isn't just doubles tips in general. This can be applied across the spectrum of Rocket League. But anyways, I'm going to get on with the video that took me way too long to make. Like, I seriously need to get a life. We're starting in the settings. Weird, right? You probably didn't think the first area that I was going to touch on would be the settings. Now, I hate to sound like a PC Master Race guy, but unfortunately, consoles don't have as much choice here. You still have a lot of control on consoles, but just be aware that some of these things might not apply to you. Starting with your frame rates. Regardless of console or PC, everybody should be playing this game at a minimum of 60 frames per second. The higher the frame rate, the more of an advantage you will have in this game, and I can promise you that that is true. I have a 144 hertz monitor, and I have a supreme advantage over somebody with a 60 hertz. Something else to consider on PC is your V-Sync. Playing without V-Sync can give you screen tearing, which some people cannot tolerate, myself included, but turning V-Sync on will also give you a little bit of input lag as well. So unless you have a G-Sync monitor, you're going to want to weigh if input lag is worse than screen tearing or if screen tearing is worse than input lag. Another cool option that a lot of people don't know about is you can actually turn off weather effects. This will eliminate the rain from all of the maps only for you. So not only is this potentially giving you a performance advantage, but I personally personally think that playing without rain on is just an advantage altogether. Some things that I think everybody should turn off are motion blur and camera shake. All these do is make the game look a little bit more intense, but at the price of giving you a little less clarity while playing. Your camera settings in this game are a huge deal, and I'm surprised at how many people haven't even edited their options. My personal settings are very wide and open. I increased my field of view all the way. I have my distance set back, and really the main things that you want to touch on here are your field of view and your distance. Your field of view is set at 90 degrees by default fault, but you can set it to 110 degrees max. This will open up your playing field and you can see a lot more information. So I recommend that everybody at least tries 110 degrees and see if you can still make good contact with the ball. Distance is a little bit more subjective. I personally like it very far back so I have an even wider view, but some people cannot stand a camera being that far away from their vehicle. The rest of the settings are very personal to how you play. I recommend trying a lot of the pros camera settings and then seeing which one you like the most and going with that. I'll include a chart containing most of the pros camera settings in the 
description. Controls are also an area that you're going to want to edit before playing. I use a PS4 controller myself, so if you use an Xbox controller, just adjust accordingly. But your controls are also something that are going to be very subjective to how you play. But there are a few things that I recommend everybody does. First of all, what you can do is move your boost button from circle to square or even a bumper. Moving boost to square gives you a slightly easier angle at hitting the X button to jump, and moving it to a bumper gives you access to boost with both thumbs on the thumbsticks and X. I have my boost set to square, and then I moved my air roll and power slide to L1. This allows you to adjust the car in the air, and you can still leave your thumb on the boost button. This also means it's much easier to power slide while boosting as well, which is very important. One of the things that surprises me the most about this game is the amount of people that don't realize there are differences among the vehicles. The variances between vehicles can include power sliding, hitboxes, and their turn radiuses. They are minor differences and the most important choice is just finding something that's comfortable for you, but I would be lying in this video if I didn't tell you that picking your vehicle will make a difference. I'll have a chart in the description containing the exact vehicle stats, but some examples of differences among vehicles would be the Venom, Breakout, Dominus, and Batmobile having incredible turn radiuses, and the Gizmo and the Batmobile having really good hitboxes. Items make no difference in this game, they don't affect the hitbox or anything, so go wild with whatever you want on items. I'm going to assume that you have at least a general knowledge of Rocket League play, and by that I mean that you can score at least a 5 or higher on all of the all-star training. If you can't do that yet, I recommend just doing the all-star trainings in the game until you can at least get a 5. By the time that you can get a 5 on all-star aerial training, I'm going to assume also that you can get at least a 9 or a 10 on goaltending and at least a 7 or an 8 on striker training. If you've ever been outside or been around sports at all, you've probably heard the term that defense wins championships. This is absolutely true in Rocket League. Defense is always more important than offense, and you should always remember that. Everybody who is good at Rocket League needs to be a good goalie. You can't just play Rocket League and then say, I'm not a goalie. If we look at the Rocket League field in three parts, containing your goal, midfield, and your opponent's goal, there is a very specific strategy in Rocket League doubles play. Most of the time, you should have one person in each of the zones. Basically, what I mean is on defense, you should have somebody in goal and then somebody trying to clear the ball. Another very important tactic you need to learn is cycling. If your teammate fails to clear the ball, you are going to want to cycle up and try to clear it yourself. While this is going on, you're going to want your teammate to cycle back and play goalie. Always be anticipating and predicting how your opponent is going to play the ball as well. You're going to want to understand your opponent's play style and if they tend to shoot from midfield or far away from the goal or if they tend to dribble it in because that will let you know when you have to make an impact on stopping the ball. Sometimes you're going to want to challenge the opponent before they can make it to the goal. This is very much true if somebody is dribbling sloppily or just slowly in general. You can turn a defensive situation like that into an offensive play very quickly. I feel like this generally has to be said too that you should never pick boost over a save. It's amazing how many people go for boost instead of the ball when the ball is clearly going towards their net. Having full boost does nothing if the opponent scores. Another great thing to get used to is stopping the ball before it can get to your goal. A very general strategy in Rocket League is just to hit the ball into the corner so that it goes over the net and then drops down for a center. It will make your life a lot easier if you can stop that ball before it even gets to your goal. You want to practice aerials above your goal and wall riding before your goal so you can stop the ball before it even has a chance to go in. Another very general tactic in Rocket League are campers. Now campers are going to sit at the midfield boost line and just wait for you to clear it so it's basically a pass to them. If one guy shoots the ball towards you, you want to analyze the situation and see where the other guy is. If the other guy is moving up on the ball, you just want to get it out of there as fast as possible so you should double flip into that ball. However, if the guy is camping towards that midfield boost, you don't want to just hit the ball away from you. Essentially, what you're doing in that situation is just passing him the ball and giving him the opportunity to try and score again. What you want to do in this situation is dribble that ball into one of your corner boosts. A great way to clear the ball in that situation is using the boost that you just picked up to get the ball on the wall and then play it on their side. It's very difficult to stop. Some players might not be camping at that midfield boost, but coming in and taking your corner boosts. This is called boost starving. Do not let your opponent boost starve you. It is very hard to make a good clear without boost. Ideally, you want to have the person with the most boost in goal, and then the person clearing the ball should grab the corner boost on their way to clear the ball. If your opponent continues to boost star view, it's most likely going to end up with them scoring because you're not going to be able to make very good plays. If you're playing as a goaltender in a 1v1 situation, you're going to want to understand how the shooter is going to shoot the ball at you. There is generally three types of plays in this situation for the person who has the ball. Most people are just the shooter, the person that just shoots the ball at the goal and hopes that you miss. These are very easy to stop, they're very predictable, 
goal. And most of the time, if you have decent goaltending talent, you're not going to have a problem with the shooter. The second guy is the dribbler. These guys tend to bring the ball close to the net while keeping it close to their own vehicle so that they can redirect it at the end and try and get you to miss it. If you've faced enough dribblers before, they aren't too terrible to stop. However, some people are good at this. If they get the double jump just perfect, they can get the ball over the goaltender. A good tactic with these kinds of people is always take the higher ground. Very rarely do people shoot the ball under you. So if you can just get higher than the opponent, you're going to stop that ball 90% of the time. The third type of player in this situation is called the faker. These are basically only advanced players, so I'd be surprised if you've come across a lot of these unless you're in a high level of play. Advanced players know that you're trying to predict how they're going to dribble the ball. Typically, instead of redirecting the ball at the last second, they're going to try and fake you out to get you to miss the ball. They won't even hit the ball at all. They'll just watch you flail out of the net and then they'll have a completely empty goal. Another great way to clear balls, especially if you don't have boost, is the pinch shot. If you drive the ball almost straight into the wall, a lot of the times you can get a massive shot with not a lot of speed. Sometimes this is enough for a clear on its own, so it is vital to learn the pinch shot, especially in really tricky situations. Rocket League Trainer is a mod for PC that can teach you how to make incredible saves and incredible defensive plays, so I highly recommend you download this and then try some of their playlists. Not to plug my own video, but I do have a video on the Rocket League Trainer if you are curious. Other than that, a channel called Rocket League Academy has incredible videos on pinch shots, goaltending, and defense. If you want a little bit more in-depth look at defense, I recommend you start there. The first rule of offense is to prioritize defense. Never be more offensive than you are defensive. A simple way of putting it is it's much harder to be defensive on offense than it is to be offensive on defense. You should always prioritize defense. But anyways, the first tip that you should have in offense is just to practice striking the ball. You want to be able to make good contact with the ball. You want to be able to see your target on the screen and be able to put the ball as close to your target as possible. The in-game striker training is actually a really good tool to get better at striking the ball. But other than that, I think Rocket League Trainer does a really good job of giving you offensive situations to finish. You should also be really familiar with power shotting the ball. Basically, always remember that the front of the ball, or the nose of the ball, is the most powerful shot that you can have. The side of the ball is second, the roof of the ball is third, and the wheels of your vehicle are the weakest point of the vehicle. Another extremely simple technique is to know when and when not to hit the ball on offense. I feel like at this point it shouldn't have to be said, but you should never ball chase. You should always be anticipating the deep defense and seeing if you're going to be able to make a clear shot or if you should go to defense yourself. You're also going to want to apply that cycle mentality to offense too. Having a really good cycle mentality on offense means you're just going to hold possession of the ball a lot longer and it's going to be much easier to score. My personal strategy is to have one person as the keeper. I know that means goalie, but in this instance, they're like the midfield keeper and the scorer. And then the other person is going to be the centerer. The keeper's job is essentially to sit by one of the side boosts at midfield and make sure that if the center centerer loses the ball, he can still keep the ball in play. In a perfect situation, the centerer hits the ball over the net, gets a perfect center, and then the midfield keeper moves up and becomes the scorer. And while you're doing a cycle like this, it's very important to boost starve your opponents. If your opponents don't have a lot of boost, it's going to be very difficult for them to make a clear, which just leads to you holding possession even longer. If you are playing as a centerer, you might want to learn how to get very creative at this. It might seem easy just to roll the ball around the corner and wait for it to go to the net, but it is also very easy to stop. You're going to want to learn how to wall ride the ball above the net and maybe center it downwards or play the ball against a wall. Using the walls is a very creative and unpredictable way to get really good centers and to fake out the goalie. Just remember if you're centering the ball to center the ball very high. You're also going to want to make sure that you never have two players moved up very close to the net. Having two players moved up is essentially suicide. If you're both attempting to score on the same shot, not only will it make it more difficult for both of you to score, but it's going to leave your opponents a perfectly clear shot when you miss. Speaking of which, you should always assume that the goalie is going to make a save. If you're always predicting the goalie to make that save, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to follow through with your shot and be able to get the second hit if your shot needs it. Now there's going to be situations on offense too where your opponents are nowhere near you and you're going to want to know how to dribble the ball effectively. Dribbling is vital to both offense and defense. One of the tricks a lot of people like to do for offensive situations if there's no one near them is a move called the tap and smash. This is most useful when you have a lot of time and space and if there's somebody in net. Essentially what this is is just a soft hit in the air and then a follow-up aerial shot to throw them off guard. You'd be surprised how often this catches goaltenders and defenses off guard. You can also not do that in 
and just dribble the ball in general and try and make a play on the ground. The best way to get better at dribbling is just to jump into free mode. You're going to want to try and get the ball on the sides and find out how far it has to be on the hood before it goes over your vehicle. You're also going to want to test out speeds to see how fast you can go or how slow you can go while maintaining ball control. You should typically practice dribbling without ball cam on because it makes it much easier to anticipate how your opponents are reacting to it and it actually makes it just a lot easier to maintain ball control too. Cole over at Subpar but in HD made a very good video on striking the ball that I'm going to put in the description as well. There are two very basic ways that you can dribble a ball and then two ways that the opponents can react to it. In a really good Cronovi video that I'm going to link in the description, he explains this as four levels of ball control. Basically, the first way that you can dribble the ball is just to redirect it right before the opponent goes for it. In a perfect situation, the opponent's going to miss the ball and you're going to have a free shot. If your opponent catches on to this, that's when you're going to want to start faking it. If your opponent starts going going to where the ball should be as opposed to where it is right now, that's when you want to do the fake hit. Your opponent should really just fly past the ball and leave you an open net. I personally think that aerials are extremely vital to being good at Rocket League. Everybody who wants to be at least decent at this game will probably have to know how to do a decent aerial. One of the best places to practice aerials is obviously the all-star aerial training, but you can also get the Rocket League trainer and practice aerials that way too. They're actually both really good. One of the very common aerial tips is knowing how to double jump. If you double jump right off the bat and then boost into your aerial, you're going to have a major advantage because you can get in the air faster. You'd be surprised how often this can make a huge difference between two people going for the same ball at the same time. If your opponent jumps once, tips back, and then goes straight up in the air, while you double jump and go in the air, you are going to get there before your opponent and be able to make a play right over his head. Being able to practice double jump aerials will give you a major advantage. A guy named Kev Pert has a fantastic video outlining a lot of aerial techniques, but he really goes in depth about the double jump aerials too. I'll obviously include that in the description as well. Another thing that should be mentioned is you should know when and when not to aerial. If your opponent has has already begun the aerial process and is going for a ball, most of the time there is no point in you going for the aerial as well. If your opponent is beating you on this aerial already and you've waited, you're better off just focusing on defense unless it's a life or death situation. Life or death pertaining to a goal, obviously. I mean, it's not really life or death, but quickness on aerials is everything, so you want to learn how to anticipate where the ball is going to be and get in the air faster than your opponent. Wall riding is probably the number one thing that separates elite players from intermediate players. The first trick in a wall ride is always being able to anticipate ball position. You're going to want to know if the ball is going to bounce off of the wall a little bit and have that space because then you're going to have to jump off of the wall. You're also going to want to know if the ball is going to hit the ceiling because that's going to completely throw you off if you're not anticipating that. A lot of players are already holding down the joystick when they're double jumping off of a wall and what that does is basically your second jump turns into a flip which renders you out of the game for another five seconds as you float down to the ground. Just remember, if you have to double jump off of a wall, always to let your left thumb off of the thumbstick while you're double jumping. Another great thing to practice while jumping off of a wall is to air roll your car upright again. This is a very easy thing to practice in free mode. Basically, just jump off of a wall, hold down your air roll button, and then go upright. Practicing this is going to make it a lot easier to get a very clear shot on the ball off of the wall. Remember to always follow through with your wall hits as well, because sometimes a second hit can be a huge difference in a goal. And know your limits as well. Don't drive up the wall if you know you're not going to be able to make a play. You're better off just sitting on the ground. But wall riding can be absolutely essential in offense and defense, especially when making clears on defense. There is another video by Kev Pert on wall riding that I'm going to put in the description that I thought was absolutely fantastic. Face-offs are one of the areas in this game that I am not that strong in. I tend to play it safe and just double jump into the ball at the last second. However, some of the things that I do know about face-offs is you always have to be reading your opponent and seeing what they're doing. If you use the right thumbstick just to check over the ball once in a while, you're probably going to find that your opponents aren't going for the face-off at all. If you know this ahead of time, you can get a clear shot at the goal. You also want to know if your opponent is delaying their face-offs or if they're going in at a really weird angle because that can give you an advantage too. Some other things that I do in doubles play is just to switch things up up through the course of a game. You should occasionally try to stall the ball in the middle and have your teammate come up and make a play on it immediately, and sometimes doing a delay hit can give you the opportunity to get the last hit in the face-off, giving you the offensive control. A channel called MasonRL90 has a very in-depth face-off tutorial if you want to learn more about doing fast face-offs. Hopefully I have at least given you a good start and some good resources to learn more about getting better at Rocket League. There are a lot of fantastic channels, honestly. Like, I don't even consider myself good most of the time, but there are some really 
really good Rocket League tutorials, like entire channels dedicated to Rocket League tutorials on YouTube. But you really only get better at this game by two ways. Watching the pros play this game and then playing this game yourself. And as fun as it is to crush people, try to always have fun in the game regardless. I mean, really, what fun is it to be really good at this game and be better than everybody else? I mean, to be honest, everybody is getting way too good at this game and it's making it a lot harder for me to get my rank up. Actually, you know what? Don't even listen to anything in this video at all. Here, watch this video instead if you really want to be the very best Rocket League player to ever exist. You will be able to cream Cronovi if you watch this video. Just ignore everything I just taught you. Ever. I, I can't do it anymore. I, I Honestly, I can't do it. I, there's no way. I can't make a boring ass video like this. It can't be this generic. You know what we're going to do? Today, we're making a video that can show you how to be the absolute goddamn worst at Rocket League. You are going to be so bad at this game, your teammates will hate you.